What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video I'm going to talk about why you should still consider using Flutter in 2021. So this video has been kind of inspired by the new release of Flutter 2.0, which has quite a bit of new features in it. So let me kind of high level go over some of the really exciting features of that and then I'll talk about why you should consider using Flutter or why potentially you should not use Flutter. So starting off with Flutter 2.0, Flutter web is now stable, so there are a few pros and cons to this. The main pro to this is you can use Flutter web to get a version of your app on a live web page. So one way to think about this is if you use Spotify, Spotify has a website. If you go to spotify.com, you'll see their website, but on their website, you're not able to actually listen to music. It's just informational and it's just their website that's essentially getting you to download their app. But Spotify also has a web app, which you can listen to music on in the browser. That part of Spotify, that web app where you can listen to music, it might feel like you're still on the same website because you are, the domain is likely the same, but that part of the website is actually what Flutter web would allow you to do, is something like that, where it's taking, taking the content of the actual app and putting it on the website. So if you are, getting involved in building a mobile app right now, you could focus on iOS and Android right now, but then once you get that ready, you can use that same code base and kind of build it for the web as well, which is very, very cool. Kind of similar to Flutter web, Flutter desktop is becoming more close to stable. So it is on the 2.0 stable branch, but it does have an early release flag. So it's still kind of in beta, but it is usable at least. We can start testing it and using it more. And what this means is you can actually build desktop apps. So if you use a Mac, you can have a Mac app that you can download on your computer. So using our Spotify example, you can download a Spotify app on your computer and that's separate from their website and it's separate from the app on your phone. So Flutter would allow you to do something like that where you can have an app on your computer and then you can also have that app on your phone. And the good thing about Flutter is it's all using the same code base. I don't think Spotify is using Flutter, but the concept of what they are able to achieve with all this stuff is what you can achieve with Flutter now. So really what this is all getting to and the biggest benefit of using Flutter is that it's a platform adaptive. So what that means is that you can build this app with one cone base and you can run this app on any platform. While not every single platform is supported right now, a lot more are supported and really the most important ones are supported. So you can run the app on iOS and Android. That's always been available. And now you can run it on the web. There's more support for you to run it on your actual desktop. Just having the ability to have that one code base and run your app on all these different devices and device types Types is very valuable, especially if you're the only developer on the project. So these adaptive Flutter apps are also going to be taking advantage of the platform's actual interfaces. So what I mean by that is if you're on the computer, you're going to be using your mouse and your keyboard. Whereas if you're on your phone, you're going to be using your touchscreen. And with Flutter, these apps are already going to be able to adjust to that and use what the platform uses for that interaction. That is something that we don't always think about upfront when we're going to be developing something, but it is something that actually makes a huge difference. If you developed it, for instance, to work well with touchscreens, and then you go and put it on something where you're going to be using a mouse, there is a good bit of a difference there. It is going to feel different when the user is using it, and it's going to be actually probably harder for the user to use that version of your app that you didn't optimize it for. So Flutter is going to help with getting all of that working on all those platforms. Another huge advantage of Flutter is its rich set of plugins and packages. So while it is still a relatively young framework, it does already have over 15,000 packages and plugins. And some of those are coming from really big companies. Companies like Adobe, Amazon, eBay, Square, Century, Alibaba, just to name a few, have all built some code or packages that is now compatible with Flutter. That is really beneficial and it does allow you to reuse code that's already been built. Any good programming framework is going to take all those very similar things that every app has and make that really easy to do in your app. Once that part is done, it allows you to write the 
custom code for the things that are actually custom about your app. So that is something Flutter definitely has, and it is always growing. Flutter is now starting to categorize these packages with different tags to kind of show you the ones that are the most popular. There's also now packages that will be marked as Flutter favorites. These packages can be thought of as like the most trusted, favorited packages by the Flutter developers themselves. So another reason right now is a good time to jump into Flutter is because it is growing so quickly. And with that growth is a lot of opportunity. So there are a lot of companies, both large and small, that are utilizing Flutter and contributing to Flutter. A few that have been highlighted with this Flutter 2.0 release are Ubuntu, Microsoft, and Toyota. So Ubuntu has rewritten its installer app to use Flutter, and it's also making Flutter the default choice for its new desktop and mobile apps. So that's really exciting. Microsoft is contributing to Flutter both with adding that support for Windows, and also it's adding support for foldable devices. So both of those things are being continually worked on and over time are going to just get better and better. Toyota is gonna to be using Flutter for its infotainment system, and that is probably the most cool of these three because if you think about it, Toyota using Flutter in its vehicles is basically like another platform that is now being essentially supported because if you also look at the trends in vehicles and how we're moving towards electric vehicles, once electric vehicles get more and more popular, and if autonomous driving happens, it's going to change how we are using our vehicles. So you can imagine if you don't actually have to focus on the road and your car can drive itself, you're gonna have all this free time to essentially be entertained. So if you can build an app that can run in your car, with Flutter, that's so valuable right there. It's another platform and there's this whole new market that's going to potentially be opening up with all of that in the coming future. So that's just another opportunity with Flutter. And with all these companies starting to use Flutter, it does mean that there will likely be more Flutter jobs in the future as well. I know a couple of concerns with learning Flutter are there are a limited amount of jobs versus native programming languages like Swift and Java. And that is definitely still true. There are definitely less available jobs with Flutter. But with all these companies starting to utilize Flutter in their products and adding support for Flutter, I think that's gonna to change to actually have a higher demand for Flutter developers. So that is something that is really exciting as well. You do need to realize that Flutter as a framework is still in its pretty early stages. So learning it now is going to just give you that edge when it does become more popular, you're gonna have so much more experience than other people who are just jumping into it at that later point in time. So to wrap this up, I wanna give you my opinion on when you should definitely use Flutter versus when you should definitely not use Flutter. When you should definitely use Flutter is if you are an individual building your app. So just like I am, I am the only person working on my app and I wanna just get something built and I wanna get something working. And if that's the case and you're in that situation, Flutter is 100% what I would recommend. The reason for that, as kind of I already stated in this whole video, is that you can build with that one code base and have your app on all these different devices and all these different platforms. That is definitely the biggest draw to Flutter, and it's a relatively easy framework to learn. So when I think you should definitely not use Flutter is if you don't need a mobile app. And this kind of comes down to using the wrong tool for the job that you have in front of you. So if you're trying to build a website, for instance, I don't think Flutter is a good choice for that because there's better choices to building websites. And if your website doesn't necessarily need a mobile app component to it, then Flutter is really not the best choice. That is probably the biggest reason I would not use Flutter is essentially if I wasn't trying to build a mobile app. But if you're trying to build a mobile app, then I think Flutter is definitely, definitely the way to go. Another concern that some people might have is what is Flutter limited by that the native coding programming languages are not limited by. But that really all comes down to the type of app you're trying to build. If you're trying to build a game app, Flutter may not be the best choice. But if you're trying to build an app that is essentially consuming some sort of data, displaying it to the user, allowing them to manipulate it, and then save it back, Flutter is definitely the best choice. And that structure essentially is what most mobile apps are, other than game apps. I think Flutter for games is not quite there yet. And I think you also need to ask yourself the question, do I need a mobile app at all? Or is my project better as a website? But yeah, you can get started with Flutter pretty quickly and get an app actually up and running relatively quickly as well. So I would recommend just going and trying it out. A lot of people keep asking the question, Flutter versus you know just using Swift or Java. And it really comes down to what you wanna do. 
either one could work if you're trying to build a mobile app, but time is definitely an element here that you should be keeping in mind. If you can use Flutter and get an Android and an iOS app done in the same amount of time that it would take you to build just an iOS app, then you essentially are running twice as fast than someone who chooses the native options. Let me know what you think about Flutter and if you're using it in 2021. I did also just recently launch the website willmanstarp.com where I plan to put a lot more resources about Flutter and programming as a whole as well as design stuff and marketing stuff and really everything and anything related to starting your own side project app. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Ciao for now.